Welcome back. Uh, I've been putting together this board for the last hour and a half, two hours. I would have been reporting on the, the trades that took place, but every, first Sunday of every month we have a Zoom call with uh, with patrons at that level. And we had that today, not the first month, first weekend of April because that was Easter. So, um, yeah, that was today. And that's why this video is being posted when it is. Which is interesting because, of course, the Buffalo-Philadelphia games ended yeah, and and I'll be talking about that soon. So um, I'm I'm mix. I'm also putting that together with the Vegas Arizona game. Let's talk about trades, though, shall we? So first off, uh, nothing is is happening with Felino right now, but there's kind of a bidding war going on. And Frank Saravelli is reporting that the Leafs, the Avs, and the Caps are among teams uh, that may be willing uh, that that are probably willing to part with a first round draft pick in order to get Felino. So um, that that amps up the amount of pressure on them. Of course, if you get that first round draft pick and then you lose in the first round, or if things just fall apart, that first round draft pick can go back to haunt you. So I'm wearing a Montreal jersey because they picked up John Merrill. John Merrill's had a good year for Detroit. Detroit gets Hayden Verbeek in this deal. Hayden Verbeek, 23 years of age, uh, and with the last name Verbeek, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that Iserman knows who this kid is. So. Uh, for John Merrill, this is a chance for him to solidify that lineup for Montreal on the back end. Uh, and Merrill's a good third-pairing option. He is. And he can fill in top four if they need him to, but he'll probably be 5-6 for them, right? And then also in the trade of uh, wins for today, Jonas Siegenthaler is now a member of the New Jersey Devils in exchange for a third-round draft pick from, from New Jersey. Now, it's Arizona's pick. There's conditions on that pick. If those conditions aren't met, and if New Jersey can't actually part with Arizona's pick, then it's New Jersey's third-round draft pick that the Capitals get. Either way, it's a third-round draft pick going back to the Capitals. So, uh, Siegenthaler being picked up, same day as they've uh, waived Votnin. Um, they're, they're definitely making some changes in New Jersey. Uh, and this also signals that the Capitals are likely picking something else up today or tomorrow as well. Uh, Henrik Lundqvist came out today, and sad news from him, he tried. He tried amping it up, but uh, tests show that his heart is just not strong enough for him to make a return to the NHL at this time. So he will not be making a return this season. Uh, he was hoping to come back and, and maybe make an appearance for the Caps, but that's been shelved for now. So again, um, sad news there, but you know we want him to be as healthy as possible, right? Uh, Mike Riley has had extension talk with the Senators. Uh, there's also talk of whether or not they're going to trade him. So uh, between now and tomorrow, teams are going to be sitting down with players trying to figure out whether they want to keep them or they don't. And there's a reason for that. So if we see a bunch of guys get signed to deals through next season, and you're like, why are they keeping them? It may have something to do with Seattle. Uh, GMs are considering every, every, every move they make around the Seattle expansion right now. And... <laughs> Um, I be, believe it's Pierre Lebrun that said unsolicited. He's being told, yeah, well, we're worried about Seattle. Yeah, we got to think about Seattle in making moves. So part of the reason this deadline might be quiet is because teams don't want to move players out. Maybe it's a player they don't really want, but it might be a player that satisfies that expansion requirement where this guy, we can expose him so we get to keep these guys. Might be that sort of situation going on. So that might keep the deadline kind of quiet as well. Teams are not going to get caught like they were by Vegas. Uh, they are far more likely to say, we're going to lose one asset. We're not getting rid of three or four to keep one asset. So um, we'll see how it goes. But it is it is minor deals that are taking place right now. These are not earth-shattering deals that necessarily, you know, tilt the power in, in, in each division and not that kind of thing. We haven't seen a deal like that yet. Although the Islanders deal for Palmieri and Zajac, could end up being that uh, when we get to playoff time. I do like Kyle Palmieri. So we'll see how Seattle factors into all of this, right? We'll see how Ron Francis factors into it and how soon we're going to start seeing teams making moves with the expansion draft uh, up where there, where you might see Seattle picks up a fourth round draft pick, a third round draft pick from a team in exchange for certain um, expansion considerations. Although, again, we may see less of that than we did with Vegas. That's at least how things look like they're going to go. Um, Vancouver was supposed to practice today, did not. An additional player went into protocol today, and all like, uh, and and this is legit. All I could think was, who who's left? There's there's not very many players left who weren't in protocol. So that player goes into protocol. 
The Canucks should be back on the ice tomorrow. It should be in practice. This does not affect their, their return on Friday. Uh, it just means they're not practicing today. And again, being in protocol doesn't necessarily mean a positive test. Um, it, it, and, and the way that it's worded in the, the, uh, the announcement from the NHL doesn't sound like it was another positive test. So, which makes sense because the Canucks have all been isolated. So, that's, that's just sort of how that works. Um, yeah, so they should be back on the ice tomorrow. Maybe. Could be. Pro prob probably back on the ice tomorrow. Um, Nashville's Michael McCarron was suspended two games for a head check. Called it. Uh, it seems to be the going rate right now is one or two games. Two games being the, the most likely outcome. So he's out for the next two games for Nashville, including today against Dallas. As a Dallas fan, I know this doesn't move the needle. Um, McCarron is is a, a fill-in, fourth-line player, so Nashville just finds somebody else. The trick, of course, for Nashville is they're running out of players to use as fill-ins because everybody keeps getting hurt. So Nashville is fighting the injury bug as much as anybody else right now in the NHL. And, uh, yeah, we'll see how things go for them today. Uh, there's also a trade that's that's out there. It's in the ether. Uh, Elliot Friedman is reporting that Nick Delorier is being picked up by Pittsburgh. At the time I'm recording this, it hasn't officially been announced yet, as we don't know what's going back to Anaheim. Nick Delorier, he can fight. Um, he's he's not a guy who is is useless on the fourth line either. He can be a a solid fourth line pickup. So this may very well be in response to Colton Sevier ending ending up being waived and not being in the picture for them. Uh, where Nick Delorier is. So uh, I like Delorier. He's a good character guy. You're not going to be counting on him for goals and points or anything, but not every player in the league is there for those reasons. So yeah, he, he is willing to drop the gloves. He does add some toughness to the lineup, and uh, I, I like him. I think I think he's a solid character pickup. So um, that's apparently in the works. Uh, we haven't heard the, the completion of that trade yet or what they're getting back, but that's the rumor. So there you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video. And hey, thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.